Hi, everybody. This is Gary Peyreau, uh, otherwise known as Professor Cashflow, uh, bringing you leaders in the real estate investing community who know how to make money, and in my experience, uh, generating passive income. That's what I love. Uh, and I've got Randy Hughes, a friend of mine, who is known as Mr. Land Trust, to talk to us about the benefits of using land trusts in building a real estate portfolio. Uh, Randy, uh, thanks for joining. Thank you, Gary. It's fun to be here. I love talking about this subject. Yeah, great. Well, Randy, you and I met years ago. I think it was at uh, uh, Steve Love's uh, Prosperity Through Real Estate meeting in Southern California. And uh, I loved uh, your approach to protecting your uh, privacy and uh, um, just creating a portfolio or even on flips if you wanted to but creating revenue from income without exposing yourself to all the prying eyes out there. Well, that's the, that's the key to long-term success in this business, Gary. Uh, there are a lot of people that come and go, they burn out, they, uh, they get sued, they, they, they make bad deals. Uh, very few people make it um, long-term. Uh, this is my 50th year in this business. I started investing wow. in single family houses. When you were seven years, years old. Ago. I was actually 19, unfortunately. I <laughs> wish I was seven. <laughs> but but uh, so it's been five decades and uh, wow. you learn a lot. And, and one of the most important things you learn is you only, uh, you only have what you keep. And there are a lot of people out there in society that don't want to work as hard as many of us do. Uh, they want to uh, sue to get rich instead of work hard to get rich. And I, I probably had, I don't know, 15 single family houses in my name uh, way back when I got started, uh, before I realized how stupid that was, uh, that anybody could look up what I owned, what the debt was, what the assessed value was, and with those numbers, calculate my net worth. Now, you're not saying that somebody would want to sue you and try and take away your hard-earned uh, capital, would you? Well, the, here's the principle, Gary. Um, it, it's kind of an oxymoron in our business. The, the, the more successful you become, the more of a target you are for a lawsuit. Uh, and, and that's just, it's just kind of the way it is. Uh, because you, you may have noticed in, in, in life, Gary, that uh, lawyers don't sue poor people. Uh, no matter what poor people do, they don't get sued. And that's because lawyers want to get paid. And they know that there's a difference between uh, winning a case and collecting money on a case. And so they will do what's called an asset search prior to deciding whether to sue you or not. Right. And you don't even know what happened. And, and a big part of that asset search is to look up what you own in your name uh, to decide whether they want to sue you anyway, no matter what you've done. Right. So, you know, you're, the first line of defense for a real estate investor is to not own this stuff in your name. Right. Well, we'll get more into that a little bit. Um, I the, one of the other things besides just the brilliance of your land trust strategy that attracted me, because I, I am a customer, I, I signed up immediately when I saw that. But what impressed me after I signed up into your program was that um, you continue to give to your community. And, uh, you know, the monthly coaching calls are, are priceless because I can have all the information in, in, a, in a book. I can even read the book three times. And yet when I go to do a deal, I've got questions that I can't get answered from the book. And, uh, you know, if I go and ask an expert, uh, you know, uh, my attorney, he's going to charge me $150 or $250 an hour. So uh, your training, while you're not an attorney, uh, has been just invaluable to me and I know to countless other investors. Well, you know, you're right. I, I try real hard to give back to the real estate investment community. Um, anybody that buys my home study course uh, has access to me. Uh, I answer my phone seven days a week from 7 a.m. Central to 7 p.m. Central time. Now, who does that, Gary? Who, who, it, who can you buy a product from today that if you have a question about how it works, you can pick up the phone and call them. There's nobody that I know of. I mean, everybody I buy things from 
they 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 don't, have, they don't answer the phone. They want you to go to a website and spend three hours figuring out the answer to your question. That's right. Uh, you know, so I guess I'm a little ho old school in that. But uh, to me, uh, good service in America is dead. <laughs> well, that, that again, that's one of the things I appreciate about you, Randy. And I just wanted to kind of put that out front on this broadcast. You know, you. we normally focus on people who uh, create passive income. And I know you're a, a property owner and there's lots of benefits to that, but uh, there, I also wanted to bring you on and let you talk a little bit about what makes land trust so special because that applies to uh, every aspect of, of real estate. And one of my favorite things is to work with busy professionals who are too busy to learn everything there is to know about real estate before they get started. I think it's more important to get started. You know, the time value of money, the sooner you get started, the more impact it has on your portfolio, your net worth, uh, your cash flow, and uh, that that retirement target. When you, as Robert Kiyosaki likes to say, you get out of the rat race. Now, uh, I'm not retired. Uh, you're not retired. Uh, we could probably both retire, but uh, we're doing this because we love it. But it's nice to have the freedom to be able to work or not work. And I believe that the best way to do that is with cash flow, because if you have your your uh, monthly expenses covered by passive income, uh, you don't have to do anything. You can just, uh, you know, go to the walk to the mailbox and open open it up and pull out a check and deposit it in the bank or direct deposit, even easier. But uh, again, uh, building your portfolio, anytime you own a real estate asset, uh, it's wise to put it into a land trust in order to be able to hide it from prying eyes, correct? Well, that is correct. Uh, there are many, many benefits to using these trusts. Uh, privacy of ownership is just one. But let me back up a little bit, Gary. You said earlier to me that you're a property owner. I'm not a property owner. I don't own any property. Um, hmm. You know, when you have property and trust, you own the trust. You do not own the property. That's right. and, and then that's a good thing. So just, just to clarify. Uh, but Great yeah, cash flow... Right? I agree, I agree with you, Gary, that cash flow is the name of the game. And, you know, there are a lot of, a lot of ways of making money in this business, uh, rehabbing and um, uh, contract assignments and options and all the, all the things that you know about. Um, but the bottom line to that is if you don't, if you don't pull something off the table every now and then and keep it forever, uh, you just have a job like anybody else. Right. And I've never, I've never been big on jobs myself. Um, and my philosophy was to, yeah, I had to sell something to pay the grocery bill every now and then, but, uh, but what my long-term goal was, was to, uh, was to build cash flow and get enough, uh, single family houses. That's what I invest in, get enough single family houses that I could support myself, uh, without a job and without having to rehab or do all the other things that, that are good, but again, they're just jobs. So I agree 100%, uh, build that, that uh, cash flow, uh, do everything you can to increase cash flow because it's like a snowball. It, once it gets going, uh, it, it rolls much faster um, as, you, as you build it. Uh, it gets bigger and bigger, easier and easier, faster and faster. That's funny. I, you know, you, something you said made me think about it. I've got a list of my, my, uh, my affirmations that I say in the morning. And one of those is uh, I am completely supported by cash flowing assets that appreciate in value. Because once you get to that point, uh, really, you don't really have anything to worry about. If you're trying to pile up a big pile of money and then save up enough so that you can then retire and start spending that money, you, you know, you always have to say one of the factors in there is how long do you expect to live after you stop working? And, you know, I just, I just hate betting against myself. So, you know, I want to live as long as possible, as long as I'm happy being on the, uh, on this side of this side of the dirt. Uh, and, uh, you know, my, uh, my grandmother lived to be 104 and, uh, you know, she lived a pretty good life. So who knows? I don't want to well, be you. betting against that. Think of it this way, Gary. Uh, with these interest rates so low right now, imagine how much money you'd have to have in the bank to live off the interest. Right. Um, I think it would be uh, 
pretty close to uh, at least 10 million, if not $20 million, you'd have to have in the bank to have a decent income at less than 1% interest. That's right. So, you know, so the old philosophy of save, 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 and, and live off the interest uh, doesn't work, at least not, not right now. And not um, in a not in, know, a, in an environment where uh, uh, there's something called inflation, and I think uh, you know uh, we are in a post-COVID uh, time right now where the government has spent trillions and trillions of dollars to uh, prop things up, and when you start printing money, it's just gonna it's just gonna decrease the value of your cash. So it's good to have assets that provide cash flow. It's uh, also good if they're tied to assets that appreciate in value. That's a good point. Um, you know, there, there's got to be a consequence to putting, they already put a trillion in before, now a two more trillion. So we got $3 trillion going into the system uh, that's uh, this artificial money. Um, in the past, uh, when they would pump money in, not near as much, but when they'd pump that free money into the uh, economy, it would take 12 to 18 months before that started to show up as inflation. And in the past, which is no guarantee of the future, but in the past, real estate has benefited from that appreciation. Now, what I'm finding in my community uh, with the low interest rates is inventories are low, right. uh, sales prices right. are going up. Um, and I was just reading a report in my town of the average home prices and, and what they did this last year. And they're going up at 1% a month. Well, I haven't seen 1% a month since the 70s. Right. Uh, you know, so, you know, if you got a, uh, portfolio of uh, of a million dollars, let's say you got a million dollars worth of houses, and they go up one percent a month. That's twelve percent a year. That's one hundred and twenty thousand dollars in one year increase in value, tax free. Right. Until you take that money out, you're not going to pay any tax on. It. And then if it and comes, and you can you can refinance if you want, and uh, you know get that money out tax free too. So that's right. There's many that's ways right. that you can leverage uh, real estate assets. Uh, to now we don't know when people are going to be watching this, so you know that one percent a month is is right right today. But there are benefits to uh, real estate uh, that uh, you, they really strip out the outstrip uh, investing in things like the stock market. The stock market has volatility, which you get away from with real estate. Uh, you also can't control your the cost of your ass, price of your asset. If you buy Google or IBM or uh, Intel at a price, that's the price, and you can't make it go up or down. Whereas with real estate, you can improve the value of your property. You can put money in and and increase it, and that increases the price of the property. It also increases the cash flow. So. I love real estate for those reasons. And on top of that, Gary, as you know, you could negotiate a better purchase price, which you That's can't right. do with stock. That's right. So, you know, it just, there's just so many really fun ways of making money in this business. Uh, That's right. I always tell new begin, beginning uh, investors to uh, find what meets, what matches their personality. Uh, for example, I used to have apartment buildings. I didn't like apartment buildings. It just didn't match my personality. I had 100% turnover every year. Mm -hmm. So uh, houses for me, and I understand that houses are not for everybody. Um, I know people have made tons of money in the apartment business. It's just not, doesn't fit my personality. And so find what fits your personality because you'll be better at it in the long run. Well, uh, Randy, my personality, I, I, like, I like solving people's problems and helping people with more or less business solutions. Uh, I know there are a lot of people out there who just do a great job finding distressed owners and buying properties on a deal. And they solve their guys, that, that person's probably the homeowner's problem. They need quick cash and they bring the quick cash. I'm just not that guy, but I really like working with uh, investors and, uh, and uh, homeowners who, uh, who want to use the money that are in, that's in their house in a more effective way. And so that's why I got into notes. And I understand you said something as we were uh, talking before uh, the live broadcast, you said that you actually use land trusts to purchase notes. Now, for those who are not familiar with a note, a note is simply a mortgage. You, know, you buy a house, you put, the, you put a down payment, and somebody loans you the money. Oftentimes that's a bank and you can buy those uh, loans from banks when they go uh, sour 
And those are called non-performing notes. You can also find investors who sell properties with something called seller financing or even homeowners. And that's where somebody brings a down payment. And instead of going to the bank and getting a loan, the seller actually loans them the money to buy it. And you say, well, what do you mean loan them the money? They're not giving them money, they're giving them a house. But there is debt created, and so that is a loan. And it's like if you sold a car, and if I sold you a car and you had, it was a $20,000 car and all you had is $2,000, you could give me the down payment and then pay me the rest over time. That's seller financing and it works in homes. And I love that part of the business. But I didn't know that you could use land trusts to purchase notes. Why would you want to do that? Well, because uh, in my opinion, you shouldn't own anything in your name directly. Uh, there's no benefit. You don't, uh, you don't lose any benefits. You get all the same benefits uh, uh, when you own it in a trust as if you don't own it in a trust and own it in your name personally. But there's so many benefits to not owning things in your name. Um, you know, the privacy of ownership is certainly number one, but there's estate planning benefits, tax benefits. But um, for, let's just talk about that. I, when I invest in notes, I do it mostly through my Roth IRA, my self-directed okay. Roth IRA. I make it the beneficiary of a land trust that holds title to the investment. Okay. Uh, so my name's not on the title um, and all benefits flow through to my Roth. If, um, you know, sometimes in the note business, you got to foreclose right. and you got to do some legal things uh, that are made public. I don't want to do that in my name personally. If I'm going to have to, uh, uh, foreclose or threaten to foreclose on a piece of real, uh, on a note or a piece of real estate. But in, in your example, we're talking about notes. I don't want to do that in my name personally. Gotcha. I think it's much better to do the name of the trust and keep it all all uh, uh, below uh, below the surface. And and let's just clarify something, Gary. We're not talking about doing something here illegal, immoral, or fattening. We're just talking about you protecting you and your family's assets. Right. If you're not interested in doing this, fine, let it all hang out. Uh, but I, I don't do this to take advantage of people. I've been in this business 50 years. I've never defaulted on a loan. I've never not done what I said I was going to do. But if you come after me because of some frivolous lawsuit, something I'm not responsible for, but some quirk in the law that allows you to sue me, then you're going to get a fight because it's my money and my family's uh, assets. It's not yours, and I'm not going to give it up easily. Sounds good. Uh, Randy, I don't know if uh, if it's on your side or my side, but I, it looks like you might be freezing here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to wind this up because I don't want to continue to uh, stream live if, if we're having video, uh, uh, video issues. So if you would kind of wrap it up and tell people uh, basically how they can get a hold of you if you if they want to know more about uh, using land trusts to protect themselves, protect their privacy, and to learn all the other uh, benefits. As a matter of fact, give us a, a you know like a twenty second list of some of the other benefits besides privacy that land trusts give you, and then uh, why don't you tell uh, our viewers how they can get a hold of you? Okay, well, another big benefit that most people use trust for is to avoid probate. If you own real estate in your name right now and you die tonight, your heirs aren't going to get control of that real estate for several months. And it's going to have to go through a probate process, which is a legal process that costs money and takes time. If you put your property in trust and you die tonight, your heirs will get immediate, right now, control of that property. And that may probably be very, very important to them to be able to have immediate control of the property. Right. Um, in addition to that, you can bypass the due on sale clause. You can bypass reassessment of your tax. Okay, so it sounded like you were saying that you could bypass the reassessment of your uh, property when you sell it, and uh, that's on that's sale. Uh, yeah. Those written a booklet. I've written a booklet uh, with over fifty reasons to use a trust. And you can get that for free if you go to my website. Uh, there's a phone number right at the top of the homepage that you can text to and 
uh, and get that booklet with 50 reasons to use a trust. Uh, so go to my website. It's land trusts with an S. That's plural. Land trusts made simple dot com. Great. Land trusts made simple dot com. Uh, if you okay. want to call me uh, or email me, uh, email is Randy at mr land trust dot net. So that's Randy at Mr. Land Trust dot net. So on the website, we still, it's we still Land Trust plural. Good. On, good. The, on your email, it's Land, Mr. Land Trust singular, and it's dot net, not dot com. That is correct. That is correct. Well, great, Randy. I, I'm still having problems hearing you, so I'm going to go ahead and, and close it off. Just keep your smiling face on the screen, and I'll just uh, say goodbye to our viewers. But thank you so much for watching this. Uh, this is Gary Payro, uh, Professor Cashflow, and you can see more videos at professorcashflow.com. Uh, that goes to our YouTube channel. When you get there, please go ahead and click uh, subscribe. If you're watching this on Facebook, go ahead and leave a message for uh, either Randy or for me, and one of us can get a hold of you if you want to know more information about either using land trust to build wealth and to protect yourself and to protect your assets, or uh, good ways to get into the real estate business without having to swing a hammer and learn every single aspect. Because again, property ownership is wonderful, but it takes a little bit of know-how so that you don't get taken for a ride. And it's much easier to learn whether a, a mortgage note makes sense because that is really just the numbers. I can walk, I could walk you through it in 10 minutes and you'd be well, not an expert, but you'd be knowledgeable. So would love to talk to anyone who wants to generate cash flow. Would love to refer anybody who wants more about uh, knowing how to use land trust to Randy. And I want to thank you for your time. Take care and God bless. Thanks, Gary. All right. Thanks, Randy. Bye-bye.